Hey, what's up everyone and welcome to the School of Personal Finance. My name is Rich McCormick and in this video we're going to be talking 403B plans. A 403B plan is a retirement plan that is offered to employees of nonprofit organizations, schools, hospitals, religious organizations. It's very similar to a 401k plan, but there are some big differences. So with a 403B, you could contribute directly through payroll deduction. So the money comes out of your paycheck and it goes over into your 403B account. And then inside of your 403B account, you're gonna have a menu of different investment options that you could invest for your future retirement. So in that way, it's very similar to a 401k. The big incentive with the 403B is that when you make the contributions, you do not pay taxes in that year on the money you contributed. So for example, if you make $50,000 and you contribute $5,000 into your 403B, you will not pay state and federal income tax on that $5,000 in the year you made the contribution. And then the money will grow inside of the 403B tax deferred all of those years, then when you take it out, that's when you pay taxes on it. A big difference with the 403B as opposed to the 401K, in my experience, I haven't really seen any 403B plans that have a match. There might be some out there, but in the K through 12 school district universe or in the community college universe, um, I haven't seen any that offer an employee match. So it's really just going to be the employee putting their money into the plan without getting a match from you know the university or the school district that they work at or the hospital that they work at. Now the biggest difference with a 403B plan is the investment options, the investment vehicles that are available. So 403Bs are also called TSA accounts, which stands for tax sheltered annuity. So most 403B plans, you find annuity products as the investment options. So now there are some pros and there are some cons to annuity products. So for example, in a typical school district, you might have 15 different vendors or providers that sell annuity products to the teachers of the school district. So there might be some big name companies like AXA, MetLife, Voya, Valic. So these are all insurance companies that have salespeople that go around the schools and sell the 403B product to the employees of the school. The downside with this is that these annuity products, they could really be terrible. So the expenses, the costs inside of these annuities can be sky high. So where a typical 401K plan, a good 401K plan, you know, might have very low costs to them. The investment options, the funds, they could have Vanguard funds where the expense ratios are very low, you know, below half of 1%. 30 basis points, a quarter of 1% would be a good plan. Whereas on the 403B side, in some of these tax sheltered annuities, you could be paying two and a quarter percent, two and a half percent in expenses inside of your tax sheltered annuity. And this, honestly, it's like highway robbery. If you look at that over a 30 year period, it kills the growth in the account and you end up paying thousands and thousands of dollars in fees by using this 403B account. One other major downside with a 403B plan are the surrender schedules in these annuities. So in some of these annuities, they have what's called like a nine year, so they could even be longer, 10, 11, 12 year surrender schedule. So what that means is that when you put money in, when you make a contribution, it is nine years, it has to be in that account for nine years before you could either roll it out to another account or take a distribution from it without having to pay the insurance company a penalty and they might charge like a 7% penalty. So for example, if you put $10,000 in in 2019, and here we are in 2026, seven years from now, and you wanna take that money and take a distribution from it or roll it to another company, they might charge you a 7%, an 8%, 6%, they might charge you some you know, amount in a penalty just to move that money out. So on that 10,000 bucks, I mean, that would be $600 in a penalty. If it was a 6% penalty, that's a lot of money, especially if you wanna roll larger sums out to another plan or if you wanna take distributions. So you have to also be cognizant of how long the surrender schedule is and how steep the penalties are. The one good side to some of these annuity products is that they have a high fixed account or a high savings account inside of them. So if you're investing in your 403B and you wanna put a piece of it in a conservative part of the portfolio, 
that fixed account pays much more than the regular savings account. So I've seen people where as they're older and they're getting close to retirement or they're retired, they'll use that fixed account as their safety net, as their you know very conservative option. And it pays much higher than a regular savings account at the bank or a CD rate. But that's really about the only good thing that I could say with these tax sheltered annuity plans. So if you're in the school district where that's all you have available to you, I highly recommend that you invest outside of the 403B plan, that you go and you open up a traditional or a Roth IRA through Vanguard or through Fidelity or Betterment, and you invest in a low cost IRA where you have more control of the investment options and the funds that are available to you. Now with a 403B, you do have some options to get money out if you really needed to. So if you fall on hard times, there are some hardship provisions in a 403B where if you fit in one of those exceptions, you could take money out through a hardship withdrawal. You'll still owe taxes and the penalty on that money, but it allows you to at least take the money out of the 403B plan if you needed to. Like for example, if you're facing foreclosure on your home, you could take money out of your 403B to pay for that. Another way you could get money out, which is a better option, would be through a loan. So most plans allow loans, but each plan is specific, but most plans will allow loans where you could take out a, um, a loan on your 403B account, but you will owe interest to the insurance company, to whoever your 403B provider is. Another way people could get money out that a lot of people don't know, and this goes for a 401k also, is that if you are 55 and you retire, so 55 and older, when you retire, you could take money out of a 401k or a 403b without paying any penalty on it. So you still pay income tax, but you won't have to pay a penalty. So if you're 57 years old, you decide to retire, you could take distributions from your 403b account um, without any kinds of, uh, of penalties or anything. So now here's Rich's quick tip segment of the video. So for my first quick tip with a 403b plan, is to think long and hard before you decide to actually use it. If all you have available to you are insurance companies and annuities, then I do not think it's in your best interest to even enroll in the 403B plan. I would instead use the IRAs, Roth IRA, traditional IRA. After you've exhausted those two and you still wanna save money for retirement above and beyond that, then you might not have any other option but to use your employer-sponsored 403B plan. So quick tip number two, is look at the vendors that are available to you through your employer. So go through the list and try to pick out companies that offer low cost options. Like for example, if you had, you know, Fidelity is one of the options. Is it the low cost Fidelity where the actual expense ratio on the funds are low cost? Look and see if they have Vanguard. If Vanguard is one of the options in there, chances are you have very low cost index funds and that might be a great option for you. So go through the vendor list and see what the actual options are. If it's a big insurance company, then understand that if you go with it, even if you like the salesperson that's walking around the schools, if you go with them, you're going to pay for it. It's expensive. My third tip is to check out target retirement date funds. So if you're investing in your 403B and you're unsure how you should be allocated, a target date retirement fund is a great way to go. Again, back to the expenses, you want to make sure that it's low cost. You don't want to pay more for a target date retirement fund than if you put your own pieces together. But a target date retirement fund is a great simple option where you could just choose one fund that corresponds with a date that's around when you want to retire and just invest in that one fund for your retirement. And my last quick tip with the 403B, and I don't want to beat a dead horse, but it's look outside of the 403B. See what other options are available to you. See if there's low cost providers in there. It really is the most important thing when it comes to the 403B. You don't have to use the 403B. If your expense ratio is gonna be two and a quarter, if it's gonna cost you two and a quarter percent year after year after year to invest in the 403B plan, and you're gonna have these long surrender charges, it's honestly not worth the other benefits. You could save outside of the 403B plan for retirement. That would be my best advice. All right, so that's it for 403B plans. Hopefully that was helpful. You know, 403Bs are very similar to 401Ks. The way that they're taxed, the way that they're structured, there's a lot of similarities. What I tried to focus on today were the big differences and the things that you really need to watch out for. So I hope that you found that helpful. Please, if you have any questions about it, if you want to talk more about it, feel free to email me. Go to schoolofpersonalfinance.com. You could send me an email through there. Check out the other videos that I have on the website. Please subscribe to my email list. 
check out my YouTube channel, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I will see you again soon. Thank you.